description a little bit. Um, you worked with people at Ringo Starr. Um, was that was that a very different experience from those early days? Uh, it was something I'd always been interested in uh, from the first time I ever went into the studio. But uh, I wasn't really, I was co-producer on Ringo with uh, Pete Drake, who was a, one of the top steel guitar players in, in Nashville. And he had, uh, they, they had brought him over to England to cut some tracks with with them. I don't know where they clicked those at. Uh, it was a big studio in London. Abbey Road? Abbey Road, Abbey. yeah. And they became good friends and then Ringo decided he wanted to do like a country album. And uh, that's how all that came about. So both of your roots, did they really lie in country music? Mm, yes and no. Uh, at the time, uh, Country was the, the probably the easiest uh, avenue to get into business overall. Uh, all of our roots were basically the same: uh, country, R&B, uh, blues, uh, jazz. I love jazz, and DJ love big bands, and which it's all kind of just melded together, you know. So another thing I wanted to jump to was asking you about the 68 comeback special, um, which I think was a real pivotal moment um, in Elvis's career. What, I mean, there's that sequence where you're sitting around and kind of talking about the old times. How spontaneous was that or was it really manufactured for the cameras? No, it was all right off the top of our heads. Uh, they didn't want it with any kind of dialogue or you guys have to do this, you have to stand on this mark, none of that, or sit here. Just do what you want to do and we'll turn the cameras on and when we get tired of it, we'll cut it off, you know. And besides that, it wasn't a comeback special. We hadn't been anywhere, none of us. So that was the manufactured part? That was yeah, I don't know where they got that from. That came later, years later. Just because he'd been doing movies and hadn't been doing any live performances. Yeah, so after what, what made you put down the guitar for so long, Scotty, and, and then what made you come back? Uh, well, the uh, the 68 Special was the last thing that uh, we played with him. And uh, I had a studio in Nashville at the time. Uh, then just a series of events. Uh, this was right during probably the peak time uh, until later when they when you had a studio on every corner in, in town. Uh, when he went into to Vegas and started uh, uh, his stamp there. Management had contacted all of us, uh, say the old heads to come out there and work the thing with him. Supposedly it was just going to be two weeks. Well, I'll give you an example. The Jordan Ayers uh, had 40 sessions on the books at that point. And their producer, Owen Bradley, told him if they went out for those two weeks that he'd, just, he'd have to get another group for the whole 40 sessions. And so that, that gives you an idea of what we were up against. DJ was doing four sessions a day of playing. I was doing four engineering a day in the studios. And uh, what they were offering uh, per week, it was just strictly a bottom line decision we had to make. No money. Yeah, well, now had we known he was going back on the road and blah blah blah, might have influenced the decision in another direction. Who knows? You know. And um, just a couple of other things I wanted to ask you. Way back when you were making those records in the um, kind of mid fifties, uh, I guess the studio technology was very primitive to what you've got now. But do you think a lot of the spirit's been lost as the technology? Has improved. I think so. Everybody wants to get punch a button and just make it sound like a guitar or bass drum or a bass or whatever. And, uh, we're, we're getting that in Nashville. One guy comes in six months later, another guy comes in, and uh, I think you just lose the feel. Everything we did was right off the top of our head, and take it or leave it. And that's whatever we you got. That's what you got. To give you give all the young inspiring audio engineers out there, just one simple line. The shortest dis distance between two points is a straight piece of wire. 
That's great. One other thing I finally wanted to ask you both was um, you you both played in so many, I guess, classic records that have touched so many people. But I was wondering if there's if you both got one particular recording from um, Elvis's um, catalogue that that's special for you. Well, the early record I like is kind of like Don't. It's a, it's a slow ballad, and he sings the fire out of it. There wasn't much on it. It was quiet, easy going record. That was a difference of the other stuff we had been playing. And, and Scotty, do you have anything? Uh, I kind of lean the same way on, on Don't. Uh, Don't Be Cruel is, an, is another one I like because uh, I only played the intro and the chord on the ending. So I sit through that one. And, uh, it gives you a rest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's as good a reason as any to like it. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.